Pastor Stephen Furtick's son recently released a song flexing on all the haters. And though he's only 16 years old, he was flexing his wealth, his diamonds, cigarettes, all the stuff you'd expect from a pastor's kid. Near the end of the video, we're gonna listen to the song so you can hear it for yourself. So why am I making a video about this? This is something I've asked myself and part of the reason that I've put off making this video for a couple weeks. After all, he's only 16, he made a song, yes it's dumb, yes there's worldly things within it, but is it really that big a deal? Can't his parents deal with it and uh, I should just move on with my life. Why am I using my platform to talk about this? Well, here's the thing. I still agree with that assessment partially, but there's some concerning things that have popped up that <laughs> exemplify a bigger problem at hand. Here's my major issues. Holly Furtick, Stephen Furtick's wife and the son's mother, obviously, um, has come forward and supported her son and, you know, go get it, you know, good job, love the music, that kind of thing. It just confuses me. Why are parents, instead of like disciplining their son and, you know, helping him along because he's only 16, look, he, he doesn't know, I guess, like he, he's not understanding that this is wrong. Um, why isn't it his parents coming forward as their God-given role to help disciple him and point him in the right direction instead of pushing him in this harmful direction? So why would he be making this type of music? Like, doesn't he understand, like for the son, it's like, doesn't he understand that this is not, this is not right? Doesn't he understand that there's like a difference between like worldliness and righteousness and that you probably shouldn't be flexing your, you know, your clothing, your money, your diamonds, like that seems kind of uh, messed up in a way. But then you look at his dad, right? And his dad is become, you know, very prominent and well known. And if you benefited from some of Stephen Furtick's content online, look, that's great. I believe that God can draw straight lines with crooked sticks and he can use broken people um, in order to, you know, bring people to himself. So if that's the case, that's great. That doesn't mean that we don't point out the problems and the problems are absolutely evident. Me-centered sermons, um, churches that are focused on entertainment as opposed to discipleship and righteousness and godliness. Hyper-obsession on the latest trends instead of the enduring word. If that was your experience with Christianity, a Christianity that looked exactly like the world that was trying to appear the world that was trying to emulate the world, then why wouldn't you make music that does the same? And maybe some people think I'm being dramatic, like, yes, this song isn't to the level of like Megan the Stallion, or I'm trying to think of Doja Cat, or like Nicki Minaj, or, you know, Snoop Dogg, or anything like that. Okay, obviously it's not that bad. But at the same time, these people have a platform, right? They have a platform, their son is putting up music, they are, at least the wife is, you know, saying in public, we support this, good job, unless they've retracted that by now. So they are accountable for this stuff, and they're you know, sharing with the world what they approve, what they think is godly, what they think is good. Okay, I've said my piece, and as promised, let's listen to this song. I'm not gonna play the whole thing for you, but uh, you know, we'll get the gist. Disclaimer, my dancing is not approval of the song. It's just, you know, I got a groove. <laughs> you might cop a billy, like a billion dollars. It's so funny, I know I've said I said my piece, but it's like, this is all pastor's money. Like, this is all money from the church that is, like, you know, he's flexing right now. He's flexing his dad's money, who is a pastor. If that doesn't seem wrong to you, I don't know what does. Bro, keep a blicky. I'm getting in racks and I get them in plenty. I'm dripping in finny. I know y'all some racks just like Mickey. Don't know what I want. I'm too picky. I keep me a baddie like Demi. My neck is frosty like it's windy. Just... He keeps a baddie? Like a, like a girl? Like, you you refer to a girl like a baddie? Wow, that's, uh... That's misogynistic. Uh, yeah, white knight coming in. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> he walks in a party, they sipping on honey. <laughs> um, you know what? I I'm not uh, I'm not fluent I, on uh, the you know alcoholic beverages. I do know that uh, most of the time that is alcoholic. Um, you know he why is he going to parties that's drinking alcohol? Come on, be be a good kid. Come on. Now. <laughs> Did he say baguette? Did he mention a baguette in this song? I wish I had the lyrics for this song. I cannot find them, but I think he mentioned a baguette. I don't know. That that part I approve. I love baguettes. Look, I know I'm making light of this song, but really, I don't think this song is God glorifying. I don't. I don't. Like, if you're going to be get serious about it, if you want to identify the lyrics in this, it's like, is this a positive message? Is this a biblical message? Is this something that is, you know, good, right, pure, worthy of praise? Like, I don't know. I don't think so. Threats, that's Russian roulette, doing 200 in the Rory on my race. Fuck, I don't care, I'm 
His diamonds, his diamonds are going to blind you. His diamonds he got from his dad, who's a preacher, who, who gets paid by the church. Yep, yep, his diamonds. Remember that, church congregants. The pastor's son's diamonds are going to blind you, and he's flexing on you. Just imagine, you know what? I didn't touch on this, but this is actually the best point. Imagine you're a congregant from Elevation Church watching the pastor's son flex his money on you. You just, you had a hard time making rent, but you decide to give the church anyway. And then you pull up on YouTube and you see this kid flexing on you, his money, his diamonds on you. And you see his mom saying, oh, good job. Good job. Like, we love this. We love this. How are you going to, how, how are you going to process that? There's a disconnect there. That ain't right. That ain't right. Okay, so he just explained walking in with his uh, baddie, his girlfriend, and everyone's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, if that's not objectifying, I don't know what is. I wouldn't support that if I were his mom, <laughs> okay? Hold up, wait a minute, there's more. Okay, guys, this is not the end of the story. So, apparently, Stephen Furtick has addressed his son's rap in a recent sermon. I watched the sermon, well, parts of it. I couldn't put myself through that. You know how it would be. Anyway, he talked a lot about haters and insecurity and following your passion and how things you know some people won't fit you and you gotta you gotta understand look some people aren't gonna like you not a lot of people like Jesus he never addressed it specifically but it was just so interesting the way he went about talking about this because you know it's in the back of his mind I looked in YouTube right now on YouTube when you search Stephen Furtick the first thing that comes up is Stephen Furtick son rap and so obviously this is at the top of his mind, you know, this is the biggest hullabaloo in a while. And so, you know, he comes out, he's preaching about, you know, there's going to be haters in your life. There's going to be people that underestimate you, that don't get you and you got to take them off because it's not for you. You got to put, you know, take them off like a jacket. It was just so interesting to see the finagling that was happening in this sermon. You swim in your sea. I'll swim in mine. We can both be blessed. We can both be blessed. I'll preach it how I preach it. You preach it how you preach it. It really doesn't change anything that I may said in this video. Anyway, I just want to throw that in there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take and I'll see you next time.